I graduated at the University of Toronto in the spring of 1943, and had it not been for the unfortunate fact that I was an enemy alien, in quotation marks, I would have gone on to Osgoode Hall, I would certainly have joined the army, which had some obvious thing to do, but I couldn't. I was an enemy alien. And so I had a rather difficult summer, the summer of 1943. Uh, fortunately, I could continue working uh, for the Canadian abridgment, <coughs> And I wrote cases for 50 cents a case, and I managed to have kind of subsistence living. And I went to Ottawa. I, did, I worked in the library of the Supreme Court to write my cases, and I also went to, do, uh, to, to kind of snoop around to see what kind of opportunities there might be in wartime Ottawa for someone like me who was not yet uh, legally a Canadian, but who was clearly interested in making some kind of contribution. So I went to see Davidson Dunton at the War Information Board, and he was interested in me, and later on I had further contacts with him, uh, but there's nothing he could do for me. And I went to see John Grierson, head of the film board, whom Mackenzie King had imported in 1939, uh, and who had assembled around him a number of rather nonconformist and interesting characters, who later became major filmmakers, and who were unorthodox, and some of them are very, very left wing. And I was not particularly left-wing, but I would have fitted in very well. But it couldn't be done. The Civil Service Commission said no, because the film board was a part of the Canadian Civil Service. I went to see other people in Ottawa, but I got nowhere. Uh, so somebody suggested you, if you're really... If you're, he can't get anywhere. What does a man do if he can't get anywhere? He becomes a teacher. So if I wanted to become a teacher, I had to teach in a private school. I had no qualifications at all. I was 23. I, was, uh, I had no experience in teaching, but I had been to an English public school, private school, a public school, and if I found the right English, the right school, in Canada, which with kind of an English orientation, um, I might be lucky. So I went to see the headmaster of Appleby College. I put on an English blazer and I wore an old school tie, and I pretended to be. A, I tried to conceal my German accent, and he hired me right away. And I became a school teacher at Appleby College in the fall of 1943. But before that, I had a great opportunity. Some, I was still associated with the university, although I had graduated, uh, and the university had undertaken to help to save the harvest in the Canadian West because there was a labor shortage, the war, there were not enough men, and so about 20 or 30 able-bodied students were dispatched by train to Lucky Lake. I went to Lucky Lake, Saskatchewan. An incredibly long and interesting um, train ride. I knew that Canada was a big country, but I, one has to see it. The, it was in, terrific. And and I the, the company was terrific, the, the students, and we arrived in it in this ex ex extraordinarily poor farm. Uh, I was unprepared for such poverty. Uh, there there was no problem in the in, in the 
kitchen where we ate. The women didn't, the, 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 how the farmer's wife and daughter did, did not sit down with us, they did the work. And we got very good food, but we had to sit on orange crates. There were, it was still the tail end of the depression. I was not prepared to step in this relatively rich country, Canada, in the, in the Canadian prairie, to, to, to witness such drear, dreary, sad poverty. Anyhow, I've worked too hard. I, I, I've never before or since done such, physic, such difficult physical work. The first day, I, incredibly hard work. Incre- and we had to get up early in the morning, five o'clock or something. And if the, if the missus, I've forgotten the name, rise and shine, we had to get up and got a big breakfast and then we were shepherded out to the farm. To, to the, we had to do the, anyhow, it was very, very hard work. How fortunately, it started to snow and then they couldn't do any more work. So anyhow, they got a whiff of Canada. Uh, and this in combination with uh, my experiences in Ottawa prepared me for the work I then did in 1944 in Canadian journalism. I met B.K. Sandwell, the uh, editor of Saturday Night, which was then a very important uh, high-quality news magazine. And I wrote stories, and there was one story I, that, that Sandwell liked particularly <clears throat> about... Um, a man who arrived at, uh, which had actually happened, at Appleby College, uh, where they hired a teacher. They were so hard up, they didn't really investigate about the background. So this man, who, whom I liked a lot, and I went to uh, walks with him after dinner, and he was arrested. He was arrested in the, must have been in the, during the winter, 1943-44, as a jewel thief. He had been a, he had been stealing jewels from the rich to give to the poor. Rififi. Very nice man. And I don't know what happened to him. But I think they made a film about him later on. And I wrote that up in a kind of an amusing way and I offered this story to Sandwell and he took it and was published. And then all kinds of other stories came came up and I wrote profiles and kind of think pieces in connection with the Canada that was emerging, what is the post-war Canada. And I therefore interviewed Molly Callahan, the writer, novelist, who had a program on the CBC of Things to Come, a kind of futuristic program, worrying about the post-war world. I saw, I wrote a story about Andrew Allen, great radio producer of uh, I listened to the every Sunday night at stage 42, stage 43, stage 44 that was must viewing in Canada. Everybody everybody but people I mixed with uh, were very excited by the Canadian plays that were being produced by him. And uh, I wrote brochures for Citizens Forum it was a national public affairs program. Uh, and all this I found very satisfying and important. And I learned a lot. And it prepared me for the work that I was to do in the next few years, about which I will talk the next time.